Welcome to Anatomy of Abdomen. So, in the first session, we would learn about the surface anatomy of abdomen. So, let us see some landmarks in abdomen. The first point is the Murphy's point. It lies below the right coastal margin in the mid clavicular line. So, to note the Murphy's point, it is first we have to draw the mid clavicular line. So, we put a point over the midpoint of the clavicle. A vertical line drawn along the midpoint of the clavicle is the midclavicular line. So, here the dotted line is the midclavicular line and uh, it is present in the that is the right coastal margin. So, here is the coastal margin. So, this point is the Murphy's point. So, the Murphy's point is for the, uh, it is a landmark for the approximate location of fundus of gallbladder. So, we can see the fundus of gallbladder here. So, which is a, an approximate location for the fundus of gallbladder. So, the point is at the intersection of right linea semilunaris and right uh, coastal margin at the tip of right ninth coastal cartilage. So, it is the point of intersection of right linea semilunaris. So, linea semilunaris is the lateral border of the rectus sheath. So, along the lateral border of the rectus sheath, that is the linea semilunaris which is along the lateral boundary of the rectus abdominis muscle and at the tip of right ninth coastal cartilage. So, the coastal cartilage which is associated here is the ninth coastal cartilage means here. So, that is about the Murphy's point and uh, the most important thing clinically in acute uh, cholecystitis when anterior abdominal wall is pressed at this point, the patient winces while uh, taking a deep breath due to pain. So, that is the point of tenderness in acute cholecystitis. So, next point is the McBurney's point. It lies over the right side of the abdomen at the junction of medial two-thirds and lateral one-third of the line joining the umbilicus with the anterior superior iliac spine. So, here is the anterior superior iliac spine and here is the umbilicus. And if we join these two points, the junction between medial two-thirds and lateral one-third. So, here medial two-thirds, lateral one-third. So, this point is the McBurney's point. So, this point corresponds to the most common location of base of appendix. Base of appendix is the point where the appendix is attached to the cecum and is the site of maximum tenderness in acute appendicitis. Okay, next point is the mid inguinal point. The mid inguinal point lies at the midpoint of a line between pubic symphysis and anterior superior iliac spine. So, here is the pubic symphysis. And anterior superior iliac spine. So, midpoint between these two points is the mid inguinal point. In adults, it approximate uh, surface marking of the femoral artery which lies just below the inguinal ligament and a deep inguinal ring just above the ligament. So, just below this mid inguinal point, it is the surface landmark for femoral artery, location of femoral artery in adults. And above to the mid inguinal point is the location of deep inguinal ring. So, next is the location of deep inguinal ring. 
Deep inguinal ring is an opening in the fascia transversalis approximately midway between the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic symphysis and 1 cm above the inguinal ligament. So, this is the anterior superior iliac spine. And here is the pubic symphysis. So, we know this is the mid inguinal point. So, the next surface marking is the transpyloric plane, which is located at the lower border of L1. So, this is L5, L4, L3, L2, and here is the L1. So, if we draw a horizontal line along L1, that is the lower border of L1 indicates the transpyloric plane or adhesence plane. So, we say it as transpyloric plane because the pylorus of the stomach is located at the level of transpyloric plane. So, this is the pylorus of stomach. Transpyloric plane which is otherwise called as Addison's plane lies midway between the suprasternal notch. So, this is the suprasternal notch of manubrium. Here is the suprasternal notch. So, from suprasternal notch we have to draw a line till the upper border of pubic symphysis. So, the midpoint over this line indicates the location of transpyloric plane. Otherwise, we can say that this plane corresponds with the approximately the midway between the umbilicus and the sternal joint. So, the location of the umbilicus is between L3 and L4 here and here is the sternal joint. So, the midway between the umbilicus and the sternal joint roughly indicates the location of transpyloric plane. Posteriorly, the plane intersects with the lower border of L1 vertebra. Anteriorly, it intersects the uh, coastal at the 9th coastal cartilage. So, it intersects with the 9th coastal cartilage. So, a line drawn along the uh, ninth coastal cartilages touching both the ninth coastal cartilages is the transpyloric plane. It is the key plane uh, of the abdomen as it corresponds to number of abdominal viscera. Let's see the structures which lie approximately within the transpyloric plane. Origin of superior mesenteric artery, origin of portal vein which uh, from the confluence of superior mesenteric and splenic veins behind the neck of the pancreas. Next is the hilum of the left kidney which is also located in the transpyloric plane. The hilum of the right kidney is slightly lower. Origin of the renal arteries, duodeno-jejunal flexure, termination of adult spinal cord, pylorus of stomach. Pylorus of stomach is not a constant feature in the transpyloric plane. Linea semilunaris, it is a curved furrow which extends from the tip of the ninth coastal cartilage to the pubic tubercle. So, here is the ninth coastal cartilage. So, from here till the pubic tubercle along the lateral border of the rectus abdominis. So, this one is linea semilunaris. So, linea semilunaris lies few centimeters away from the median furrow and corresponds to the lateral margin of rectus abdominis. So, the next important landmark is the subcoastal plane. Subcoastal plane is located along the upper border of L3. So, L5, 4, 3. So, along the upper border of the L3. Is the location of subcoastal plane. It is an imaginary horizontal plane which passes immediately below the coastal margins. It passes anteriorly through the lowest borders of coastal cartilages of 10th rib 
and posteriorly through the body of L3 vertebra. So, above the body of L3 vertebra and along the coastal margins, that is the 10th coastal margin, is the subcoastal plane. Trans umbilical plane, as the name suggests, it is the plane which is crossing the umbilicus. So, this trans umbilical plane, it lies between L3 and L4. So, between L3 and L4 vertebra, and it is a transverse plane that passes through the umbilicus or at the navel and lies at the level of intervertebral disc between L3 and L4 in normal healthy individuals. And this location may change, the that is the trans umbilical plane may be different and variable with different individuals, especially in those who are having pendulous abdomen, it may not correspond with L3 and L4 vertebral levels. Trans tubercular plane the plane which corresponds with the upper border of lumbar fifth vertebra. So, this is L5 and here is the sacrum. So, along the upper border, if we draw a horizontal line, is the trans tubercular plane. It is an imaginary horizontal line which joins the tubercles of iliac crest. So, here are the tubercles of the iliac crest which joined by the trans tubercular plane. And it is palpable 5 cm posterior to the anterior superior iliac spines and passes through the upper border of L5 vertebra. So, 5 cm posterior to anterior superior iliac spines. So, that is how we locate the trans tubercular plane. Interspinous plane is located along the body of S1. So, just below the trans tubercular plane, so just below the trans tubercular plane, along the body of S1 vertebra, if we draw an horizontal line, it is interspinous plane. Regions of abdomen, the abdominal cavity is conventionally divided by the clinicians into 9 quadrants. This facilitates the description and position of the organs present in the abdominal cavity during examination. These planes are used to delineate the 9 regions or 4 quadrants of abdominal cavity, which the clinicians refer to describe the location of abdominal viscera and pain in the abdominal region. So, these regions are bounded vertically by two midclavicular lines. And horizontally by subcoastal plane. And also trans tubercular plane, below by trans tubercular plane which is located at the level of L5. The abdomen can also be topographically divided into four quadrants, namely the right upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, left upper quadrant and left lower quadrant. These quadrants are bounded vertically by the median plane and horizontally by the trans umbilical plane. So, dividing the Abdomen into four quadrants by a vertical median plane running through the umbilicus and trans umbilical plane which runs between L3 and L4. Dividing into right superior, right inferior, left superior and left inferior quadrants. So, let us see the abdominal regions and uh, their main contents. So, we said initially the abdomen is divided into 9 regions by 2 vertical planes which are the mid clavicular lines and 2 horizontal planes. One is the subcoastal plane, 
the other is the trans tubercular plane so first region is the right hypochondric region so this is right hypochondric region where the liver gallbladder is located in the right hypochondric region epigastric region epigastric region is in the middle above the umbilical region epigastric region is associated with the stomach pancreas and duodenum so deep to epigastric region we can see the stomach and pancreas and also the part of duodenum left hypochondric region hypochondrium hypo means below chondrium means cartilage so it is present on the left side below the costal cartilages so it is called left hypochondric region it is related to spleen and left clean colic flexure right lumbar region right lumbar region is related to right kidney right ureter ascending colon umbilical region so in the middle where the umbilicus is located is the umbilical region where the loops of the small intestine aorta and inferior vena cava are related in the umbilical region left lumbar region left lumbar region left lumbar region is to re, uh, related to left kidney left ureter and descending colon right iliac fossa right iliac fossa is related to cecum appendix on the right side hypogastric region so below the umbilicus in the middle is the hypogastric region calls of the small intestine urinary bladder if distended and uterus if enlarged so in these cases they are related to hypogastric region left iliac fossa is related to sigmoid colon so these are the regions and viscera which are related to these regions in surface anatomy thank you this completes the surface anatomy of abdomen